Good afternoon. Well, believe it or not, a couple have asked me to do another story. You know, seems to like them. Right, they like my props, I thought I'd, well, make the most use for me. Anyway, I'll have to come a bit closer to you, otherwise you won't hear me very well. Now, although my DKW was the, my first car, technically, my first car really was my Mini. So I'm going to tell you about my Mini. But I'm also going to tell you a little bit, you know, about what I was doing and, and all the rest of it that goes with it. So, hope you enjoy it. Anyway, as usual, just a short intro. I've been away to college for a year, a residential agricultural engineering college at Tame near Oxford. And then I came home, got my job at Horncastle 12 miles away. And as you know, I was uh, nearly 20 when I passed my test. And I had the DKW, but I didn't have it on the road very long at all. Anyway, at the college, um, we had we went back for eight week courses. There was three of them uh, for the next exam that we had to take, and the last one fell over the Christmas period. So I just turned twenty in the November, and I came home at Christmas, and I bought Mini. Now. That was a mistake actually, um, not buying the Mini was a mistake, but I bought it from a dealer and I borrowed money. That's the only time I ever had for a car, that taught me a lesson. So we got the Mini and it was pretty rough actually, it wasn't that old, 1961 Mini in 68, but it was pretty rough actually. Anyway, I went to college in it and when I got there it was on three cylinders, it burnt a valve out. So we borrowed some tools and took the head off and bought a new valve, I found it had a cracked insert in the valve seat, it was an exhaust valve and uh, anyway we just put, the new, put a new valve in and ran it, and I know it wouldn't last long anyway while we were there they had a treasure hunt and so of course I went rallying round, took two mates with me, one was scared stiff and one was loving it well the subframe broke on the Mini, it was pretty rotten and the exhaust trailed in the floor and trailed the exhaust off. So I drove it home like that and got home. Uh, and I did actually get in contact with the dealer. I got it off and he did supply me with a new subframe. So I fitted that. And six weeks later, the valve insert broke in the engine. Well, I wasn't worried because this is when I met Carl. Because uh, he did engines, you see. He was engine reconditioner. Well, I pestered them. Uh, you know what to do with that and of course it was lack of confidence and it's ironic really because the only 18 months later they built the engine for me sorry and only 18 month, month later I was doing that for a living so you know that's uh, one of the tales isn't it but the thing is you see Carl was the first person to two minis up when the first came out um, it, they didn't sell for a year and his brother was a dealer for them and sold him one at cost. And he, so he discovered very early on about them and he was one of the first tuners. Now, Cooper S's, were, which came a bit later, were very expensive. They were actually racing cars. But Mini Coopers were the working band's fast version, if you like, like the GTs of today. So what Carl did, very, very clever man, of course, he bored them out and he fitted Devon Dorset pistons in and it increased the capacity from 998, 950, sorry I'll get right in a minute, I should know sometime, from 950cc to 1020cc and you put 1100 cam in. So we did that engine and that's what I had. Now when you thrashed engines, as we did, they usually only lasted about 20,000 miles before we redid them, um, simply because we could. You know, it, it was just a set of pistons and it, it wasn't a big deal, to be honest. Anyway, I went all over in that many that year because I can remember I had that engine in for a year and finally, what stopped it, um, it broke the timing chain. Now, at the um, A-series engines only have a single chain on, 
and you can off get some what they call duplex change, you know. And in the end, as I say, it was the timing chain broke that stopped it. And I actually sold the engine to someone and they stripped it and it didn't need much at all. You know, I think they put uh, shells and rings in and ran it for another year at least or even more. Definitely. So that was the tail of that engine, which was, oh, star engine. Flew all over on it, we did. Oh, raced about. Now remember, in those days, there was no speed limits, right? There was no blanket limits, you know. And it was pretty safe, though, because most people drove about at about 45 to 50 mile an hour, while we drove about 70, you see. And uh, we could do it, you know, obviously I could do it, because I didn't crash, I mean, <laughs> you know. So it taught me a lot, didn't it? It definitely taught me a lot, that did. But, like I say, oh, I went all over in that many. I mean, every night I used to go to the, in the summertime, I used to go to the coast in it. You know, that was like my holidays, if you like, the summers were, because I lived, well, it was 10 miles to Mablethorpe, is it? 12 miles to Skegg, something like that. And I used to go every night. Then at weekends, we were going to the stock cars, you know, and I went all over in it. I went to Bellevue lots of times. So, oh, I'll tell you about the, the first trip to Bellevue. So I looked at the map. Obviously, we didn't have sat navs then. We looked at the map and A57. Well, as anyone in this country may know, the A57 is a snake pass. <laughs> and it's a, a pretty crummy road, actually, over the Pennines. So I went with a friend, of all things. I wouldn't really know, mate. So I actually went with a friend this night. It's Saturday night, obviously. So we went, we got there, and it's 120 miles from Ulsby. Um, there's now a motorway, you know, which makes it easier, but there wasn't then. So, we, we set off, while well, coming home, it was foggy. I remember this to this day. It was terribly foggy. And what a trip. It was, you know, I used to, I used to enjoy driving. I really did, until the last, what, 10, 15 tw years or so, I really enjoyed driving, hate it now. And even, uh, Mark, you know, where my tractor is. He said the same. He had to go on a long trip fairly recently. And he said the same. He hates driving now. You know, you're, you've got to be in the right lane and everybody's tearing about and knowing where they're going and you don't and you can't miss a turning. Oh, and everybody's trying to kill you. You've got to avoid accidents all the time. It's blooming awful, it is. Anyway, we, we made it back. And then, of course, uh, I talked to my stock car friend and he said, oh, no, you don't go that way. <laughs> you go the other way. It's not the A66. I, for I forget which road it is, but it's Woodhead Pass anyway. And it's a lot better road, obviously. So I went that way in the future. But that was one of my trips and one of my stories with it. God, dear, never again. Um, so that was that night. But as I say, I did, in total, in the year... I did 43,000 miles, which is quite a lot, you know, uh, obviously 24 mile a day going to work, but uh, the rest of it just for pleasure. Used to spend, oh, three quarters of my wages on petrol, I suppose, you know, we went all over. But the thing is, you see, I could do it. That's the thing. And remember, minis didn't have very good brakes, you know, they really didn't. In fact, you never use a handbrake on them. Because they, when it was, if it was uh, in the winter time, they used to freeze up. And the handbrake would freeze on, so you never use the handbrake. You just leave it in gear, you know. And uh, very rarely did you park on a hill. Then it was if I was living where I am now. Obviously, as you know where I am now, we'd have to have one, wouldn't we? But uh, no, we didn't need a handbrake then. So that was that story of the trip to Manchester. It was a good night, by the way. I always enjoyed Bellevue, the old Bellevue. Oh, best stock car track in the world. It was a brilliant place. It really was. But, as I say, it was a lot easier when I went the rest of the time. Just to tell you where I'm going, by the way, um, I went out today to get this uh, video, you know, in the car, 
to show you some bit of um, Lincolnshire in the winter time you know and it's a nice circular route and so I left Lincoln and I went through up Canning Hill turned left went through Washingborough and that's the bit that you see earlier on and then we go through Bardney which you've just seen and then we come back and turn off over the bridge and it ends up in Fiskerton past Cherry Willingham and back to Lincoln so that's the way I've been so just so you know where you, where you are that's all another thing with Mini by the way <laughs> I'm a grab of course <laughs> well <laughs> now I'll be honest I don't like riding motorbikes on a nice day is all right but they've always got the problems you know and I had one as cheap transport I told you that in the other video I think and uh, I couldn't get, wait to get out the blooming cold and rain I really couldn't you know so we got the cars well the thing is just recently two people this last year or last probably last two years anyway two people when I've told them that I used to drive about at 70 mile an hour you know and I haven't crashed they said oh you're lucky no nothing to do with luck everyone that relies on luck is either in a coffin or a wheelchair you know and it does irritate me slightly to be honest that uh, people assume that you're as thick and incompetent as they are you know and one of them was it was actually a policeman not that long ago <laughs> on a night out that we'll we'll not mention but uh, it was nothing to do with me i was passenger but uh, you know should have known better shouldn't they you know the thing is i have never driven dangerously ever seriously i've had the odd little excursion obviously you know with uh, in my mini for instance going to work there's a bend, I can't show you it, because uh, I don't think I can show you it. Because uh, it's just near home, and there was a, where the white line ends, I knew that when nothing came in, like I'd turn off the main road onto the by road. And uh, where the white line ends, I knew if I was doing 55, I, I'd be all right. Well, I must have been lost concentration or something because I was doing 60 and I was just past it and anyway, I turned and what happened was I just did a couple of zigzags I mean obviously there was nothing coming else I wouldn't be going too fast would I and uh, I stopped so it just I did two zigzags and stopped with my wheel just on the grass verge and that's alright the closest I've been but that's it I mean I was in in command of the situation wasn't I you've got to agree with me there so, but as I say, uh, and also, by the way, Carl taught me, and you can watch on this video and on my other driving videos, Carl taught me the fastest way to drive on the road is never to cross the white line. On a racetrack, it's totally different, right? The thing is, you see, on a road, there's two things. One is, you can keep your speed up, where others can't that's one thing because of course you know how fast you can go around the bend the other thing I did by the way I've never and this come from my blooming motorbike you know when I first got my motorbike I did fall off I had it fortnight and fell off because I misjudged the bend never have done since but on the road I never drive 100% not like when you're racing you know then you want to drive at 99.9% .9 if possible never a hundred percent because it doesn't allow room for error but on a road the fastest you should ever drive is 95% but normally the fastest I've ever normally driven is about 90% because you will make mistakes I make mistakes I'm human just the same as everybody else I make mistakes but if you've got 10% room for error well then you don't crash it's that simple it really is so that's how that we managed to do it now also by the way um, a mini hadn't got very good brakes and I have mentioned this on one of my other videos um, I can't just show you but uh, I was coming 
home from work on that road that you've seen once or twice and coming round a bend and there was a tractor and trailer across the road totally blocking the road there was no escape you know it was coming out a gateway there was absolutely no escape anyway I stopped albeit with two or three inches to spare but I did stop so I did drive within the stopping distance that's another very important thing you know people don't I mean I drive totally differently today obviously you know through my circumstances I mean through for economy and uh, you know I used I was for years of course you know when I had my mini I was um, I was frustrated stock car driver wasn't I but you see the reason that I didn't race much when I was young was something else that Carl said well you see when you go if you have a racing car you spend all your week at work all your nights working on it just to drive it for 10 minutes at weekends but you see if you have your road car well you can drive it all the time and that's exactly what I did like I said every night in the summer we were out you know every night oh I did miles you know I mean did I have my yes I had my mini then because it's where I had a friend in the village that we went out with that's right and uh, in the week I mean just a Wednesday night we'd go he had a, a girlfriend in fact he married her in the end so we took this this girl out I can't remember if she had a friend or not I, she wasn't my girlfriend anyway could have been just with us but anyway we went to, from Ulsby to Louth which is 12 miles then we go to Mablethorpe and it's not a good road from uh, Louth by the way it's a bit of a twisty nasty road so then, and then we go to Skeg then we go back to Ma to Mablethorpe uh, to Louth again to take them home and then come back to Ulsby you know so I mean all, all in all we did what it's about each way is about 12 miles so 12 miles to Louth and 12 to Skeg and 12 to Mablethorpe say um, on a round trip so that's 12 20 it's that's 12 24 36 48 60 72 plus the driving about so we were doing about 100 miles a night you know just driving round I mean that's the, that's what we did <laughs> you know but it was good fun I wouldn't have missed it for the world so there's another another tale from the youth eh not the best picture but there's us at the airfield right now this airfield it's quite um famous nowadays because that's where just Jane is it's East Kirby airfield and we used to go there and you may be able to see got a roof rack on because you used to take a go-kart now it wasn't it was an old go-kart right an old kart um mid-mounted and it had it well it would do 70 mile an hour which even in those days and this is 1968 it was slow right but we, we clocked it down the runway and it did 70 Anyway, I was, uh, we'd had a go or two on it, and at the end of the runway, there was a big concrete apron where the aeroplanes turned around, and there used to be a hangar there, and there's some big concrete blocks. Well, I was entering it flat out, and I was trying to drift it, and I lost it, and spun around and stopped, and the car plumbing stalled, and it was hard, with it being centre mounted, it was hard to push off. You know, twice I ran over my foot and that. So I was doing it the th uh, third time and I thought, if it spins around this time, it had three gears, by the way. It had a, it was a 97 Villiers, but a standard one. I thought it was four speed, but it had a clutch. I thought, well, if it spins around this time, I'll put my foot on the clutch. Well, <laughs> I did spin round and I put my foot on the clutch. Well, I was doing 70 when I spun round. I hadn't lost any speed. And I shot off backwards. Now, if you've ever been on a cart, you know, 30 miles an hour seems like 100. And if you drive in reverse, you can quadruple that. So, for a few seconds, I was busy, I can tell you. I was pressing the brake, keeping the th engine going, and <laughs> pressing the brake, and looking over my shoulder to make sure I wasn't running the concrete block. I tell you, it was <laughs> like driving at 400 miles an hour. However, I did get the hang 
of drifting in that car. It taught me an awful lot. I've never lost it. Well, I haven't done it for a while. But, for instance, when I took my stock car to Sheffield, I found it was the first ever Formula 2 race at Sheffield on a shale track. And I found I could drive it okay. You know, and loads of others couldn't. You know, loads of them. Oh, it's the best meeting I had with it. So, those few afternoons on that car to East Kirkby did me more good than anything I've done, I would think. As far as driving goes, that must rate at 70%, I would say, of my education. You know, so, and in fact, um, current racing drivers, they all started karting, didn't they? All of them, you know. So, if you want to learn to drive, go karting. That's the thing. Right, that'll be plenty long enough. Hope you've enjoyed the tales and the scenery. And uh, if you want any more, well, I've got plenty more, haven't I? So I coined the phrase, a boy racer in a mini, because that's where it came from. I was the first. Well, one of them anyway. Right, as usual, thanks ever so much. And take care, and we'll hopefully see you soon. Bye.